Okay, guys, so you can see my interesting setup here. So today we're going to play with some uh, more food colorings from Wilton's and some red cabbage. So uh, let's, I've got my yarn, which I have mordanted with alum. Um, and I've been soaking it in vinegar. There's still some water in there, so it might get a bit messy. So what I'm going to do first is let's pop some water into the jars. Just hot water, boiling water. We might need to get some more of that. So I'll just do that for now so that we can mix our colours and everything. Started. Just pop the vinegar out of the way for a second. So, and that. <coughs> Let's mix up some teal. I just want to play with the teal because I love teal. So, I want to see what kind of colour it comes out. And I'm going to play with the. Uh, I made sock blanks. I'm just going to get through this. Um, with my knitting machine and I want to play with that and how see how that resists and everything so we're going to play with that there we go. now whoop, where is it back on so that's two and I've got the copper and depending on how this goes, I might add another colour in with the copper once the copper's all dissolved. Don't know. Might be fun to play with. Probably not the burgundy this time. I'm going for oranges. Um, I'm hoping to be able to show you a little project at the end of this with what I do with this orange yarn. So that'll be fun. Now then. So for the teal. Um, I just have this long, I've just got some orange on it, I put my fingers, oh that's brilliant, never mind, um, long, long sock blank that I've wound sort of into a cake, I'm just hoping it will fit into the jar, so I'm going to pop it in this way, and I'm going to gently squeeze that in. There's one. And there's a little bit not quite submerged. Um, I might just leave it at that because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get the lid on. Like so. That's jar number one. Uh, do I add some vinegar? I have been soaking in vinegar. But let's just add a drop of vinegar. It's a different yarn base that I'm using. I've not used this one before. It's supposed to be an undyed plain yarn for dyeing, so we shall see. Now for the cabbage water, I've got that same yarn base again, which I'm going to try. I'm kind of testing out this yarn, see how well it dyes. Hopefully it dyes well because I've got loads to go in the orange. Uh, this, I tried to knit backwards and forwards on the knitting machine and it doesn't like it, but that's fine. I'm just shut that in there. Uh, this is that yarn that we tried before, the silk one. It says it's supposed to be silk, but it did nothing. So I'm going to try it with the, because uh, sometimes things don't dye with food colouring, but they will dye 
with natural dyes like this. So we'll give it a go. See what happens. I've got a bit of the lace that I use sometimes. Just a nice wide piece of lace. That would be nice to see how that dies up. Compare. I'm sort of comparing this to the beans, the black beans. So this is some yarn that I dyed with the black beans and onion skin. And I just thought I would put it into a sock blank. And then we could see how that over dies with the resist, see how nice that is. So I'm going to pop some more leaves on the top, I think, since we have them. Should we check another? Mm, no, I'll leave it like that. Pop all that in. And some more water and some vinegar and that's ready to go outside. And we'll see what happens. It was dyeing my hands purple when I was cutting it up, so that would be interesting. There we go. So let me bring the orange forward so you can see. Okay, so again, for this one, I just have a lot of sock blanks. As I say, I'm going to do some projects with these. Um, some of them I will be using as they are right now. And some of them... I will unravel and crochet something with. I want to see how that resist with the sock blank works. In here, I think we've got just enough room for all of these. And again, I'm going to try that yarn again in here because I can't remember if I mordanted the yarn the first time we used it. So I have definitely mordanted it this time and I've soaked it in vinegar. And we are going to try our best to dye it and see what happens. Right. All the water left in there. Yes. You see when I pour that water on, it seems to strip the colour, but it did the same with this when I poured the vinegar in, so I'm hoping that that yarn is not the same, because otherwise this video could be a disaster. Plenty of vinegar. And I'm liking, let me just get rid of this bowl. I am liking the colours that I see right now in this jar. The way we have sort of an ombre going on. I don't know how long that's going to last before everything mingles together, but that's cool. So let's see what's happening with the red cabbage. So far, not much, I don't think. But we shall give it some time. I'm going to pop all these outside now because the sun is actually out right now. It's a bit rainy, a bit sunny, so typical British summer. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. And now we'll give you some updates as we go along. Okay, so let's have a look at these. I don't know why I always put that bowl in there. To start with, I need to empty the water. So, the orange one has only taken about 24 hours. Um, again, this does not look like it's taken anything on. 
not so ever. But the rest looks like it has the water's clear look. But I'm a bit worried that it's just going to wash out. We've got some nice resist here. I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. So, nice resist going on there. It's a bit dark in here, so. So the blue has still got quite a bit of colour in it, the teal, which is you know, as expected. That always takes a bit longer to absorb colour completely. So clean. Mm. I'm getting some bleeding. See that? Water. Okay. So I would say it's not too bad. There's definitely some bleeding. It's not too bad. I'm wondering if it's actually just coming off that. So let's get rid of that. One side. Okay. Let's add a little dish soap, clear dish soap. See if that makes a difference, brings any more colour out. I can see a small amount of colour, but nothing too bad. I'm probably agitating that too much. <laughs> oh yeah, see some colour coming out. Okay. Okay. Not bad though. I think we're nearly there. Yeah, less colour. Let's just try and get all the soap out now. Okay. So, that is awesome. So now, I want this to dry. I can show you the projects that I've got in mind. I have to wait for the other two to finish. Awesome. I don't know how long this is going to take to dry though. I don't want to hang it outside because that will bleach the colours out. I've made that mistake before. Don't hang your hand dyed stuff outside when it's food colouring. Um, because the sun just bleached it. I love how the colour seems to have broken a little bit. We've got more variations of tones. I love it. That's perfect. Look at that. Amazing. Right. So I shall find a way to dry these. And we'll be back with whatever's next. Either washing the others or making these up. So let's empty these out. I put some more vinegar in this last night. So more of the blue. There was a little bit of blue coming out, but I think it was pretty clear. So okay, interesting. So I'm seeing a spot on the bottom that hasn't got any colour, which is interesting. I mean, it's like some blues and some greens I can see. So. <coughs> mm. 
now. bleeding which we expected I think <clears throat> the colour is sticking which is good you can see resist look that's nice so we're gonna have a lovely interesting yarn this towards the middle very cool so that's going to be a really interesting yarn to knit with I'm going to skein it up and see what the repeat pattern looks like so I'm really interested to see if there is any kind of interesting pattern and consistency that would be very cool <clears throat> okay so this is a nice thick yarn base it's a bit different to the yarn that I have been using. It's a bit more lightweight. This is more of a double knit. So that's more what I'm used to working with. So I'm not sure what I'm going to make with this one. I did just find a little pattern for a sort of cow sort of thing that looks like it won't take up much yarn so I might try that. <coughs> Stop the blue coming out. It's not all washing out at once, which is good. There is a um, taking a long time to go and clear. This soap should encourage all the last bits of dye to come out. We are looking a little bit better.
Oh, yeah, it's getting clearer. We are getting there. Do a second. Right. Bloody yarn. I can't remember. I think it was a 200 gram skein. It's very interesting that that bit is very green compared to the rest. Interesting. Some splitting there then. Right. Now then, <clears throat> let's grab our little jar for a second. And I'm going to start taking out the leaves. Ooh. That is a very cabbage smell. Wow, look at this colour, guys. Look at that. It's a little bit dark in here, so I should really set up a little light, shouldn't I? It's a bit of a grey day. It's normally quite bright in here, but very grey today. Okay, so let me pop that in the tub. We have this. This might die down a bit. I'm amazed how purple this is, actually. Now this is our supposedly silk yarn so I'm going to be intrigued to see if that just washes out completely uh, Ooh, I'm making a right mess with this a right mess we've got some blues and purples in there Uh, is there, oop, any more in there or is that just leaves? That's just leaves, so we can get rid of those. Going very blue now. I had a feeling it might do. Purple is a difficult colour to get naturally. You need a uh, is it? Something like that. Oh, 
Oh, those beetles. Got you near. So, 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 we seem to be getting a result here, so, that means to me, that it's a plant-based fibre, and not animal fibre, so it says it's it's supposed to be silk, cashmere and merino. Or wool. I don't think it's a merino actually, I think it's just a wool. Um, but yeah, I would say no. That yarn is definitely not silk because it doesn't take the food colouring. Silk and wool should take the food colouring. They did not. So, <clears throat> cotton does not take food colouring, but it will dye with natural dyes. So, I would say more cotton in it than anything. dries as nicely as that like a lilac colour so now I know if I need purple lace the red cabbage is the way to go with that I think so we'll see how it dries so that's on a really dark Blue. And this one is a lighter blue. It's very interesting how you're getting different tones with the same. Oh, no, that's different yarn. That's the yarn that I used to use, the uh, merino sock yarn. So that's interesting. That's just a wool undyed yarn. Double knit. Okay. So you see, even different yarn bases have different results. So they're both wool, but yeah, it could have something to do with the fact that that's. But it was more of a creamy colour, not white. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it's different, but it's different, and that is lovely. Very intriguing to see that this is really pale blue compared to the to that one. But yeah, intriguing. I must say. So I'm gonna clean up here, get those dry, and I'm gonna get on with the. Little project with the orange yarn. Okay, I don't think I was recording any of that. Uh, my battery, uh, my camera just turned off. 
claiming it was battery saving mode, which it only does when I've got it on but not recording. So I must have not recorded. So I'll finish this one and then we will do another. So as I was saying, this is my tester. That turned out okay, so we're doing it again. This one is being a bit strange, to be honest. Um, I don't quite know what I've done. I'm trying to pull some through, trying to make it a little bit more even. around okay let's grab this one <coughs> now I'm going in between so the top here and pull tight again hmm <laughs> shapes are very interesting This time we're going up here between these two segments. Pull tight and then bring it down here. Now let's try get this a bit more even. What's happening with this one? It's gone a bit crazy. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Push it a little bit, turn it a bit more. It's the shape I want. Haven't told you what shape I want yet. Um, <laughs> I might not because it's not really. Uh, uh, not really doing it at the moment. So let's start again. 
So I'm sewing up the top. <coughs> sewing up. Then I stuff with some pillow stuffing. Being careful not to overstuff and stretch the stitches. I think I might have overstuffed the other one just a tad. The first one I left kind of loose like that. So. I don't think it helps that they're quite long. They should have been a bit shorter, I think. But that's okay. They are all different shapes and sizes, these things that I'm trying to make. So. Need to make some other pieces, some crochet pieces to finish them off. Right, so I'm gonna go straight down through the bottom or top, whatever. You'll decide that later which way around it's gonna go. Straight up to the top again. And pop stitch through and pull. Then go in between those two lines to the bottom. Pull it slightly. And I'm going to go up to the top again. Pull slightly. And then we'll grab the other end, pop that on the needle. And then in between these two lines, pop stitch in, pull it so tight, and then down this side, stitch. Move it on the edge of it, pull it, then down this way, Ouch. pull it, and then down pull Straight up to the top with this one. Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to tie. 
couple of layers together. This one's a very odd shape. <laughs> I don't know why I think it might use, I think it's to do with the tension on the knitting machine, it's pulled a bit tightly so it's pulling inwards, potentially, I don't know, I want them to bulge outwards so perhaps I've not stuffed it enough for that, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. fiddle with that and try and get it the right shape. The other two aren't too bad. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, they'll do. So, they actually look pretty good in that viewfinder just there. <laughs> so, um, again, bottom. So, the other, I've got some more stock blanks here, and I'm going to be unravelling those, and I'm going to be using them to crochet some more of these sorts of things, but they should end up like this, <laughs> quite differently. So yeah, little pumpkins, but these are going to be for a Halloween party in a few years time. I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it for my next big birthday, I'm having a massive Halloween party, it's a couple of years away so I'm just doing some few bits and pieces here and there to prepare for it, I've done some lights for the tables and some resin things that you've probably seen on the channel, I need to do a couple more of those actually, and these I'm just going to dot everywhere. I'm going to try and make some different size ones. So I'm going to put a bit more stuffing in this one, see how I go. That might help it hold its shape a little more. Just to make sure it doesn't all burst out. <laughs> so yeah, I think they'll look a bit better once I've put the... Uh, and the leaf on. Let's see if I've got some more green yarn to do that. If not, we will be dyeing some, which will be fun. I don't know what I'm going to dye it with. Probably just green food colouring. Right, so down to the bottom. Okay. Top. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. This side. Nice and straight. And back again. This way.
stop stitching that because that's quite Oof. it's fighting me with one hand so it's a bit tough stuffing is being a little resistant to me oh look key might be a bit more stuffing there we go that should hold that and then we'll go this way <coughs> So the pattern that I use to make these is a Pinterest pin, so I will link that below. Works really nicely, I've made different sizes with it. And I'm going to try and do some with that yarn that we've tied in the crochet method hmm. if I want to move me on to finish this one left over Tie that off. That's just moving around a little bit. That'll do. It's okay. A bit more of a long stroke on that one. But you can get tall pumpkins, so it's okay, it's fine, no worries. So I am going to go away and finish crocheting. Well, I'll unravel this and then we'll crochet. In fact, I wonder where my cake winder is. We'll do it together, shall we? Let's have a look in this little cupboard. Yes, here. Right, let's unravel it and we can have a look. How those stitches affect the colour. I'm very interested to see if we get any kind of speckling or anything like that. So I want to use this one for definite. I'm not sure about these, maybe. They're not as uh, pigmented as this other one, so I'm going to try. Which is the best way to frog it? Um, is it to go from the bottom or the top, do we think? Let's try. I think the top might be easier, so I'm just going to pull out that. Uh, maybe not. Maybe. 
maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Let's see what is happening. Let's just see if I can do it from the bottom. Or if it's going to be slow progress, I don't know. I'll have to come back on. Show you the results. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's going to be a bit. That's just pulling it tighter. Okay, yeah, so... Let's just have a look. Hmm. Ah, here we go, now it's working. Yeah, so you can see... Please mind the gesso while there's nothing good. There are lighter and darker patches where the stitches have caused a resist. That's lovely. Right, so I'm going to take that up. Uh, where's the zip of it? Turn that into there. La, 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 la. So, take it up, and then I'll do some crochet, and I will show you what my pumpkin looks like when I've crocheted with this interesting yarn. Okay, so, <coughs> so let's look at this, uh, what we've ended up with. So this is the green that was, or it was the, was it Kelly green? No, teal, it was the teal <laughs> um, that we made a big sock blank and then made that into a kind of a cake, wrapped it all up. So as you can see, we've got some really green patches and then some whiter patches which have got still got flecks of green every now and then or teal and it's really nice I really love it and I can definitely see me making some sort of cowl or scarf from that so that's lovely and I will definitely be doing something like that again as you can see it's all crinkly because <coughs> it was dried in the blank so it's just kept that shape but you can just wet it and dry it straight if you want to i'm not really all that fussed you can see i don't know if you can see that yeah you can see that on the camera there's like more green and more blue patches which is really nice nice variations so then we come on to the red cabbage which gave us some varying shades so I re realised what the difference was between this wool and this wool. This is a superwash, which means it grabbed onto all the lovely colours nicely. 
Um, but these are still really pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Probably just make flowers and tags and things. Yeah, the little tag poles. Not poles. Ribbons for tags. Things like that. Or... Hmm, not sure. Maybe I'll do a video if I do anything interesting with those. And that was the silk. So... Yeah, it did take on the natural colour, but it's not taking on the food colouring, so that's interesting. So at least I know I can still dye it, but I'll just have to use natural dyes. Um, and it's very pale in colour, so yeah, definitely paler than the wool. Okay, and then we have our squishy little pumpkins, which came out lovely. I love this one. This is the crocheted one. And again, this yarn was dried in the blank, so it gave this little curly bit. So I might sew some more of those on to the others. <coughs> and I did... Where's my other one? Here it is. There's another one there. Um have to dye some more yarn. This is with the Kelly Green. This is that thicker yarn again. I just just put it in as a skein I believe. Just so that we could have some green for our pumpkins. So yeah. Lovely. It's really interesting how it's got that little stripe from where the colours broke in the copper. So, I believe that is everything. Um, so let's just compare. If I can find it. Let's just compare. That's the blue <coughs> that we get with the black beans. And let's grab the. This is the same yarn as this. So you can see it's a much more purple blue. Still more on the blue side, I would say, but you've got some nice violet tones in there. So, yeah. Do still get those flecks of green as well, which is interesting. It's very fun. I would like to play with that a little bit more. Maybe try it on this cotton that we have. Oh yeah, that's the lace that I dyed with the. Red cabbage. Do we have any with the? I don't think I've got any with the red onion. Oh, yeah, the black beans. Well, that one says black beans, but I think it's got more of the onion. So yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I will see you again soon.